So you've been trying to become a programmer for a while and you're having difficulty figuring out which language to pick because there's just so much information, so much possibility out there. The most difficult thing in the beginning is narrowing down what you want to do. So of course, there's a lot of people trying to do a lot of things. However, I figured if I could specify people who were trying to do what I was doing, similar to me, it would be easier for them to pick out their languages. Uh, so what I was trying to do was figure out a way uh, to make entrepreneurial ventures with the lowest amount of capital possible. And of all the opportunities and of the fastest growing companies of this century, uh, a lot of them are software. It's basically something that's invented purely out of your head and with your time. And if you put in the effort to learn it, you can make, legitimately make full businesses or at least uh, get it to the MVP stage, uh, to the part where you can test it, prove there's a market for it, and then get money and funding and more members and higher staff. Now, I can already see the hate mail coming in the negative comments because in programming, nobody wants to be told one language is better than the other. However, uh, Think two languages that are definitely future-proof, at least for the, in the current economy, as much as can be predicted because they change so quickly. But at this moment, Python for AI and machine learning, deep learning, using sort of smart learning applications or websites or businesses, or helping on startups that are doing that as a part of a bigger team, or in calling data and being a data scientist, uh, because you know big data is you know, they have a huge shortage of people who can analyze that data and actually put useful information out of it that help businesses, governments, uh, you know, who you name it, make better decisions. Uh, or JavaScript in terms of bootstrapping, starting up, being able to make applications that are everywhere on everything and every device as soon as possible with the lowest amount of money and the least amount of staff or being able to help on startups like that are using React or Angular or these other exciting frameworks. These are fast, they get to mark quickly, and you work in a much more collaborative environment than was traditionally possible following these routes where they normally would have been broken up into different teams and departments and wouldn't really talk to each other and, and there'd be a huge amount of red tape and bureaucracy just trying to get any kind of update through. Nowadays, one team can push it through and it gets all the way to market gets on people's phones, yeah, the next day, the next moment. So yeah, they're pretty great. So if you're at the point where you just want to travel and, you, and you're just like, all right, already, JavaScript and Python, I'll do either, I'll do one, I'll do one, just how do I get started? Well, there's a lot of free resources you can use. For example, most universities, if you're around that age, you're still in university, they're subscribed to lynda.com and they have uh, a lot of universities or public libraries. If you have a library card, you can probably access lynda.com through a public library. Uh, if you're in North America, Canada, or I think even Australia. Um, and uh, they have amazing resources in terms of videos, but that's more if you're you're, you can learn through just watching something and rehearsing it yourself. If you want a more collaborative experience, you can use Udacity. They're a little more expensive. I believe for web developer courses with Python, it's like $200 a month. And they will get you pretty much set in terms of, uh, you'll have classes and things that people will supervise your test time to time. They'll, you'll be able to work with other students at certain levels and uh, you do have people who are experienced overlooking your code time to time, which can be invaluable when you're starting out and you don't know what you're doing wrong on a project and you're stuck. Uh, however, there's a like, free code camp and there's all kinds of websites. Um, uh, Coursera, uh, there's, you can buy these courses really, really cheap from there and, uh, or free, and free code camp of course. And if you're a self-learner, self-starter, and all you need to do is to get the materials, there's an abundance of them out there. Look for JavaScript courses that include React or Angular, that include some sort of front-end framework, and that is more recent, because you don't want to be learning the JavaScript as before those even existed, and they don't show you, it's hard to learn without doing something. So actually building your own applications from as soon as you can, just get a, a simple idea. Or most of them have like a sample things you're supposed to build, like a movie gallery or something, or some sort of application of the sort, and just build that. Just learn by building. That's the way that all the skilled people do. Because at the end of the day, they don't care if you have a university degree. If you can do the job well, 
you can get paid for it. You might not get paid the exact same as a master's degree or a PhD at first because those people have a level of uh, confidence in, in their employees and in their skill set. However, there's a, in this industry more than most, they don't care as much about formal education as they do about results. Especially if you're trying to do an entrepreneurial. The only people you have to really respond to are your consumers and they care about results. So they don't care what your degree, what fancy school you went to. They only care if the app works and it works well and it's fun and enjoyable and it's a good UI experience. So I would focus on courses that have go all the way to using React or building something in Firebase if you want to have a more simple backend. Basically, that's a lot faster to build. Uh, Google kind of takes care of what Node.js would. Uh, and you just for a very minimal fee that you could easily afford. Uh, if you can't, then you probably can't pay rent. Uh, you need to be able to put some money into your business. I would also recommend the Mern stack, which is what I do. Mongo, Express, React, and Node, uh, or the Mean stack. Uh, however, you don't necessarily have to stick to these ones. You, like I said, you can just use Firebase for some of these applications. Depending on what you're building, you might not need a massive backend uh, for your applications. So you don't, need, don't why bother? Why bother hiring people and learning all this crap if you're not gonna be using it? Just learn what you need and build and then sell, and then build, and then sell, and build, and with time you will develop the skills you need. So if you're learning Python, you can go to community colleges, they have Python courses. Academia has a ton of Python courses, from high school classes to university courses to PhDs. Like there's a lot of facilities available, a lot of books available, a lot of uh, public resources available, and it hasn't changed entirely too much. Uh, just try to learn something like building a web app with uh, Python to Django. Try to make sure that the, the course includes HTML, CSS, Python, and the Django framework. Uh, that way you can actually build an application yourself. What most of them will do is they'll get you halfway there and then just kind of drop off because they want you to pay for that as a separate course or because most people like to bullshit and they just want to do the front end, just tinker a little bit. And that, that doesn't really cut it if you're an entrepreneur. That doesn't really cut it if you're going to be going out and proving to clients without a formal education that you can get shit done. Just so you be clear, neither of, as you're getting into these job descriptions and trying to figure out what, what skill set you want to develop, all of these I've intended to be as close as the full stack as possible with as least amount of energy, money, and time to actually get to making a project. So both uh, the Python to Django framework with HTML and CSS on the front, a bit of JavaScript, and the JavaScript using, uh, you know, the mean stack, Mern stack, or just React and Firebase, those are all intended to build entire applications from simple things like Snapchat all the way up to full scale things like Facebook and beyond. Because if you if you can only do front end, you're, you're, it's really hard to be an uh, entrepreneur because you're always relying on somebody else to make the thing that you need to make a livelihood. And in the beginning, at least to make a, a minimum viable product, an MVP, just to test it out, you need to be able to have at least the literacy to test out the most primitive version of your product, not the one with all the features and the ideal end version necessarily. You might need a team for that, you know, especially as AI and you're using Python and you want to do all this uh, deep learning stuff. But if you're just trying to make a business from your thought into reality and then get investment on a direct-to-consumer application or uh, product, you need to know these skills, and these skills are the most reliable, most uh, sustainable path for a web developer or a programmer who wants to travel or build their own applications or build their own business. Now, of course, if your needs are beyond that, or if you have your own vision for a project, by all means, pick a different language. There's lots of good ones. I'm just trying to narrow it down for those people who are doing something similar to me and are tired of having too many options. The most exciting thing about this is to realize the potential for the things you can learn. If you learn these paths, if you learn JavaScript with React and maybe Firebase or Node on the back end and such, uh, or Python and Django framework for web applications, or for you know Python more for deep learning, you can get amazing jobs. You can get the most cutting edge technology jobs today for the most cutting edge app, uh, businesses, ideas, dreams from charities to uh, you know for the next Fortune 500 companies, they will be using these languages. And you can learn them on your own and build your own applications because 
either way, whether you're an entrepreneur or just trying to be a freelancer, you're going to be end up building your own applications, one to either to show potential clients or to show potential investors. So either way you go, you're being building your own stuff and you can do it yourself. And that's a kind of a fantastic concept that for the first time in human history, you can build a massive, scalable, global business out of your own head using your own two hands from something you learned online for free. So if you liked that video and you found it helpful, please subscribe either here or down below and hit that like button.